Madam Rajavi, it's a pleasure to stand here with you today symbolically, emotionally, and physically on the stage as we collectively guide world opinion toward the righteous conclusion. Your remarks were accurate, timely, and have proved to be in the past correct, and equally so for today. For my 19 colleagues on the stage also, you are a diverse and eclectic group, politicians, statesmen, general officers, opposing U.S. political parties, academics, multiple nations, governors, internationalists, lawyers, intellectuals, but in reality, you are powerful experts in your field with a common overriding sense of agreement and commitment in two key areas, fair treatment for the residents of Camp Ashraf and the delisting of the MEK from the U.S. foreign terrorist designation list. I dare say this is the highest concentration of talent regarding delisting from the U.S. FTO list in the world to include the U.S. State Department. It appears we are moving toward a possible resolution at Camp Ashraf. In spite of Iranian collusion with the Iraqi government, the external pressures of the international forces, such as the United Nations High Commissioner on Refugees, compelled Iraq to be fair and more just. Let's hope the agreeable nature of Madame Rajavi is not abused in the very first opportunity where Iraq has the chance to shine. For residents just being moved to Camp Liberty, and by the continued use of that name, there is a sense of accomplishment for the residents. Camp Liberty sounds great. Most importantly, it is closer to the international airport that they will most likely use when they depart Iraq. But this entire effort must be closely watched by the UNHCR, the United Nations Assistance Mission to Iraq, the European Union, Union and especially the United States, to ensure no violations, abuses, or criminal acts take place. And yes, movable goods and effects must be included. Already gutted and violated, stripped of values and in disrepair, the Iraqi government has much to repair for the minimal occupation quality at the new Camp Liberty. Women, children, and older people must be supported because we do not know how long their presence will be. While this is going on, the United States government must delist the MEK. Such delisting is already accomplished by the European Union, the United Kingdom, and others. It is woefully late for the United States, even so much so that the U.S. District Court in Washington, D.C., has an overdue response pending from the U.S. Department of State explaining such a late decision and why delisting remains in place. Once again, the U.S. State Department is arrogantly and painfully wrong. Time and again, the Iraq government has stated that doing such acts as the attack in July 2009 and April 11 on the people in Camp Ashraf is because the U.S. says they are terrorists and the Iraq Constitution accepts no terrorism. Iraq is simply using the U.S. listing as a terror organization for righteous justification of killing innocent people, women, and children. With such an obvious misuse and misunderstanding by the Iraqis, the FTO designation shouldn't the United States just delist the MEK. Already we have strong bipartisan support in both the Senate and the House. How ironic that the United States and Iran are the only two countries in the world that list the MEK as terrorist organizations. Isn't that just goofy foreign policy? Such a lack of sincerity is most embarrassingly depicted by the U.S. Special Advisor at Camp Ashraf, who says the connection 
of the FTO with Camp Ashroth is urban legend. Well, what really is urban legend is the lack of substantive movement on the foreign terrorist organization delisting of the MEK when the entire world is waiting, waiting for the U.S. action. It is urban legend that is keeping the MEK on the list. However, while the world waits, much can be accomplished. Timing is a very important element here. Step one, with all of the assurances enforced that Madam Rajah V wants, move the Camp Ashraf residents to Camp Liberty. While doing so, protect them. Step two, meanwhile, the United States should announce the delisting of the F MEK off of the FTO. This organized, popular, and international resistance should adopt the MEK announced 10 point plan that was released to the EU in 2006. With these freedoms as a guide, <laughs> with these freedoms as a guide, let the MEK participate in the effort to bring down the government of Ahmadinejad and the Mullahs. The stability. The stability in the oil-saturated region is vulnerable to the threat of Iranian nuclear bombs and their announced current capability to deliver it. To friendly nations and other stabilizing influences in the region, let the MEK assist in the necessary regime change in Iran. An enemy of my enemy is my friend. Let's start treating the MEK like our friend.